Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, IT cost optimization webinar. My name is uh, Kamal Prasad. I'm a partner with the technology advisory uh, at BDO. And on behalf of the whole BDO team, uh, the organizers of this webinar, as well as the, the uh, advisory team where I sit in, I extend a warm, warm welcome to all of you. Uh, before we get into the, the presentation, just a quick introduction of who I am. So I've been uh, in IT advisory for the last 20 years. A uh, big part of my uh, experience has been in technology transformations. Uh, uh, and along with that, uh, I've helped a lot of the, our clients go through IT optimization, cost optimization, looking at areas where they can they can uh, uh, either improve uh, service or they can reduce cost and that's where we will cover this topic uh, uh, in our presentation along the way but it's cost optimization so it's it's a combination of being selective in terms of where we invest and uh, also identifying where we can take the costs out so that's where it is a balance uh, that we we try and approach and i've taken this approach with a number of my clients in the last uh, uh, 20 years that i've worked in this area today we will be covering uh, uh, a number of topics but uh, as you would have seen in the webinar invite this is uh, one of the three uh, series of webinars that we are going to be doing on this topic so we will share more details on what the second and third one is going to look like but uh, they will all build on each other so i would i would encourage you to participate in not only this one but also in the subsequent uh, sessions so with that introduction uh, some housekeeping uh, tips typically when we do these uh, these these type of sessions we do it uh, on a, on a, in, a, in a conference in our office where, we, where I can see you and you can see me and we can have a good interaction on some of these topics. Now, unfortunately, given the circumstance that we are in, uh, we are doing it as a webinar where you can see me, but unfortunately, I can't see you. So I would encourage you to, you, to submit questions along the way. And also, as we are going through the presentation, uh, we have added uh, and we will uh, encourage you to make note of your questions and share along the way. The more questions that I get, uh, uh, the more interactive we can make this session. And I, I'll also get a feel for whether some of the topics that we are covering, uh, they are lining up with, uh, with uh, what we are looking for. So I would encourage you to, to use the, the question uh, uh, facility in the, on the webinar and uh, and ask as many questions as possible. The presentation slides are attached, uh, so if uh, you want to download it, keep it uh, uh, keep it uh, as a reference point. Feel free to do that. But at the end of the uh, webinar, we will also share the presentation uh, along with uh, 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 with with an email, uh, so uh, you will get the, the copy of the presentation that we are using today. For technical difficulties, uh, there are there is a link. Uh, so if, if there are challenges, let us know. We have got our uh, video web organizers with us monitoring the session. Uh, so if there is any technical challenge that we have along the way, uh, hopefully between the support link as well as the, the team that I have, I have who are supporting this discussion, we will be able to sort it out. And as I said in the uh, earlier, uh, there is going to be uh, a post session email which will have presentation slides uh, recording of the sessions plus we have actually uh, uh, written a few thought leadership papers or articles on this particular topic we will share all of that with you so that it, if, if at any time you want to reference uh, back to this this webinar you should have the content to refer back to So uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, the first of the three webinars that we are doing on this topic. Uh, and the way we are we have structured it uh, is the, today's session is going to talk about some of the things that we can do here and now. And, and I'll, we'll talk about the context as to why we are 
we are focusing on or, or highlighting what we can do here and now, uh, and they include some of the low hanging fruits that uh, you might have in your IT setup, some optimization uh, activities around service level, uh, uh, and some of the contract management uh, contracts that you might have, have in place. And then the last one is around vendor management. So in our experience, a lot of these things are can be done in the in the in the zero to three months, four month time frame. So they are fairly fairly quick. They they will deliver immediate uh, optimization. But then there are some others which take a little bit more effort and they they take a bit more time to deliver for the business. So those are the ones that we have actually put it under uh, webinar two and three. So in the near term, uh, three to six months. Uh, we will focus on some of the digital tools that we can we can leverage for cost optimization, uh, asset management, um, IT uh, management, and then the self service part of it. And then in the last one, which is a little bit of the six month plus type of activities, we'll talk about portfolio management, agile delivery, and transparent IT. So each of these topics are going to build on uh, on the previous one. So uh, 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 highly, I would encourage you to participate in all of these. So with that, uh, I'll go into the first of our topics, which was around uh, the immediate uh, IT or cost optimization opportunities that we might have in the business. So the question that typically comes up is, why are we talking about uh, IT cost optimization? Now, number of reasons uh, uh, for that, uh, especially in the economic situation where, where we are. Now, a lot of our clients and a lot of businesses are going through a process where they are looking at uh, managing cash, managing cost, and making sure that every dollar that's going out of uh, uh, the, the, the organization is actually delivering value for work what is important and what is critical for them and that's where there is a lot of focus on just pure cost management and, and cash optimization now it is a big part of the spend that organizations would have depending upon your industry it could be it could be as as low as three and a half percent of your revenues to as high as 15 or 20 percent of of your revenues so IT is a big component of that cash that uh, that goes out of the organizations, and hence there is a big, a big focus on making sure that every dollar that goes out is actually delivering uh, value. So, so that's that's a big driver where a lot of our clients have come back and said we need to start focusing on IT cost optimization, and hence we thought it, it's going to be good for us to actually share our, our learnings with everyone and and and, and uh, uh, see how we can collaborate and how we can share uh, share ideas to to make it a little bit more uh, more uh, effective so why why invest in it cost optimization so the first one is around the, the greater value out of your investment both in your it systems as and services the second part is around freeing up resources to invest in activities which are more value adding. So uh, it, it is, when we talk about optimization, it's around not only taking cost out, but also investing in right places. So if you're investing in right places, it has a big impact where uh, if the resources are doing day-to-day -day manual activities uh, or working on collecting data, uh, comparing spreadsheets, some of those things, if you take that out, the teams can focus on more value adding activity. And that, that, that is a big part of what we would want to discuss today. Then it gets down to, uh, given that IT is a big part of the spend that the organizations manage, it's around building that uh, or showing prudence, uh, uh, bringing that, uh, that transparency in where the spend is going and also increasing the confidence in IT. Which takes, which leads to the next point, which is where IT and the IT teams can take control and show leadership, and that's a big part of, of uh, uh, managing costs, being proactive about it, and then uh, showing leadership around uh, 
uh, how IT can be, can support the broader uh, agenda. The, the next one in there is around risk and comp compliance. Uh, and uh, as organizations are going through uh, uh, more and more people working from home, uh, uh, more and more data getting exchanged over, over the internet, this is about making sure that the risks are getting managed appropriately. If our working environment is changing, if the way the teams are working is changing, we, we are ready to put the right support mechanisms behind that so that the risks, risks are, are managed, as well as if there are compliance elements that we need to manage along the way, we are able to take care of them. And then the last one is around uh, business ownership in uh, optimizing IT. Now this, when we talk about optimizing cost, uh, uh, it's not about the IT teams doing it by themselves, but it's around working with the business, engaging with them, collaborating with them to, to uh, deliver on an optimized portfolio. And that leads to new opportunities for the business uh, to, to engage with the business, uh, take ownership along with the business and optimize the overall picture. So if I look at all of those factors, they, 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 they lend themselves or towards uh, the importance of why we need to optimize uh, on IT. Now, whenever we talk about optimization, um, one of the learnings that we have had is, it is not about doing it once. So it's not about reacting to the immediate cost pressures. It's not about uh, 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 getting the budget cuts and then scrambling to, to see what we can do. I think when we talk about IT cost optimization, it should be a structured approach. It should be something which is a part of our DNA of managing IT, providing better services for our clients. So IT cost optimization, we firmly believe it should be an ongoing discipline. And the structured approach uh, helps maximize the value, not only for what we have now, but also around the tactical or strategic initiatives that we might have on, on our, our radar. And that's where it becomes a lot more important to, to uh, have, a, have a consistent approach, uh, have certain principles agreed with the business, and as and when new opportunities and new initiatives are coming in, we can always refer back to those, those principles around, around uh, cost optimization and ask the right questions to make sure that those initiatives are really going to add value to what uh, the business wants to do. The, 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 this point in there is around a need to invest. So there is, and that's where when, when, we, were, we, when we were thinking of this webinar and the terminology around that, We've always been very focused on optimizations. So it's not about cost reduction, it's about investing in the right places and also in some cases taking costs out. So it's around balancing the two and it, in, in a lot of cases, there may be investment required to actually save money. The, lo the next one is around uh, the structured approach does deliver cost saving. And uh, we will touch on a case study at the end of this presentation, but uh, there, is, there is value and there are savings in there. So with that confidence, if we start putting a bit of an structured approach, it, 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 it uh, makes it a part of the DNA, it makes it a part of our, our regular approach rather than uh, a one-off activity. And then uh, the last point that uh, we, I wanted to highlight is when, when there is a structured approach towards cost optimization, it brings in focus. It brings the teams together, uh, not only the IT teams, but also the business, uh, 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 business. And it brings everyone together, gets the focus on the right areas, and then it, it creates transparency and a little bit more structure around how we are doing, why, what we are doing, and, and why we are doing that. And that, that is absolutely uh, important and critical. So with, with that, uh, uh, with that uh, uh, mindset and approach in, in, uh, towards optimization, what we wanted to do focus, what wanted to focus on today are the, those three areas. Uh, what are the low, low uh, hanging fruits in IT? And we will talk about the top, top, top 
10 tips uh, that you could consider. The next one is around service level and infrastructure optimization. And then the third one is around vendor management. Now, after each one of these, these topics, we will pause and, and, and we will invite questions. Um, but as I'm going through these topics, if there are questions, please make, make a note of them and, and uh, uh, we will hit up uh, during, during the pauses between these sessions. So on, on the, on the low-hanging fruit and our top 10 tips. So the first one is audit all IT spend line by line. In, in a lot of cases, uh, we have seen clients where they have taken up some responsibilities in the IT teams. A budget has been handed over to them. They're tracking the budget uh, uh, on a month by month basis. And, and as long as the, the numbers are within the, within the range, it seems good. But when we, when we start talking about cost optimization, Taking a line by line approach, it's tedious, it's cumbersome, but it actually helps understand what's happening in IT. And, and every time we have actually gone line by line into where the spend is happening, why it's happening, there are so many different areas that come up that it, it just, it, it, it's fascinating as to how much uh, uh, insights you get when you just take the time to go line by line. So the number one tip is, Irrespective of, of where you are in your in your budget cycle, where you are in your in your uh, company's uh, economic response or response to what's happening in the economy, take the time to audit the IT spend line by line. The second one is look at subscriptions and memberships. Now, many IT IT groups, IT team members, they sign up for certain subscriptions as they are going through either a project or they're, they're going, uh, implementing uh, uh, some change initiatives. And it's always good for them to like, go, go and, and look at what's happening, learn, learn uh, from, the, from the right uh, organization, sign up for membership, et cetera, et cetera. But over time, they, those subscriptions and memberships, they just stay on. So a low hanging fruit, review every subscription and membership that you have. Go across your organization, small team, big teams, doesn't matter. Just have a, have a bit of a, a discussion in terms of what subscriptions they have, what memberships that they've signed up for. Ask the question that's really adding value. And there could be something that, uh, you, you, they, that, that you could look at. The next one is around uh, check all telecommunication services. Now, again, this this is this is uh, an easy one. You know, where where if you look, you start looking at uh, uh, you know, how many how many uh, landlines have you got? Now, uh, with with everyone working from home, uh, remote working becoming becoming uh, a, a norm. Uh, the question could be: Do do I actually need to have landlines? Now, it's a simple question like that will start giving you ideas or options in terms of what you can do for your telecommunication services. As we go down, the, down in the presentation, we'll talk a little bit more around what else you can look at. Number four on our list is review all in-flight projects. Now, uh, this, is, this is a hard one because it's, uh, every project has got uh, a business case attached to it. There is there is a lot of passion and energy that 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 uh, that goes in, in initiating a project, getting it over the line, and starting to execute on that. But have a look at the in-flight projects. Uh, look at whether they are going to deliver value uh, to the business. Uh, they are. Uh, what, what's our confidence in uh, in the expected benefits from those projects? And if if those benefits are at risk or they're not stacking up or things have changed because of because of the, the economic environment or because of, of the change in, uh, in your in your supply chains then maybe maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, an option for us to uh, shut it down so review review in flight projects don't, don't don't be afraid to ask questions and if there are things that don't they, they don't need to go forward, uh, making a hard call now would actually be a lot more uh, beneficial. Number five is uh, expedite decommissioning. 
of legacy applications. Now, again, a, a lot of the clients, a lot of our customers have actually moved on to cloud applications, but there are pockets that are still working on legacy applications. They are, they are on the roadmap to get decommissioned in six months time, 12 months time, et cetera, et cetera. Pull that decommissioning plan out, see what you can actually bring forward. That's, a, that's a, an, a, an easy win. Uh, especially, uh, especially given given uh, 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 an opportunity for us to look at the, into those costs, uh, decommissioning some of those applications which are having limited value in our uh, landscape, uh, technology landscape could be could be uh, extremely beneficial. Next one is around uh, the landline that we talked about. Now, uh, if you you is, still are using landlines or you have still not transitioned your uh, your users to uh, voice over ip or having their telephony on their on their laptops this could be a great opportunity uh, given that more and more people are getting used to webinars they're getting used to microsoft teams they are working uh, they're using zoom or other uh, video conferencing facility day in day out now that said, that's a, that's a, a, a great uh, uh, time to go back and say, do we really need to have landlines or should we just go on to uh, voice over IP and discontinue all the telephones? Number seven on the list, uh, review all the printers uh, that you have in your, in your, uh, uh, in your organization because uh, th there are times where people have got printers on their uh, on their uh, desks, and um, you know they, they 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 want to have that facility where they don't want to get up and go and get get the print out from from a printer uh, maybe uh, 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 20 meters away. Now this could be an opportunity given that a lot of people are working from home. Uh, uh, that that is going to become now hot desking is becoming more and more uh, important. Let's, uh, by reviewing the number of printers that we have, uh, that could be an opportunity to reduce cost and, and, and rationalize uh, the number of printers that you have. Now, linked to that is also uh, the Follow Me printing uh, uh, facility. Now, if uh, for, for those who are not, are not familiar with Follow Me, it's, it's, uh, 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 it's the mechanism by which when you print from your uh, uh, laptop, the printer will not print till you actually walk there, scan your uh, ID, a and wait for the printout to come. Now, that pause between when when the users have fired a printout and then they're walking towards the printer to collect it. Now, that has shown that adding that time actually reduces the printing by 17%. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, people might be printing the wrong version or they're fired something on the printer, but, but they, they have afterthoughts whether they would need to have 100 pages of printout or not. And that's a good opportunity for them to go to the printer, cancel all of that and not print. So again, something simple like that uh, can, can reduce your printing costs in the office by a good 17 to 20%. The last one is around looking at the printer contracts and uh, arrangements that you, you might have. Uh, and we have, we have been into a lot of organizations, and when you start asking about the printer contract, you can you you see that they might have uh, printing contracts with three or four different uh, print service providers. So therefore, for certain posters, they go to one person. For uh, for certain brochures, they go to someone else, and for some other thing, they go to a third supplier. Now, all of these arrangements might have been put in place 12, 18, 24 months back. But if you are asking those questions, they just stay stay there forever, and uh, it's a massive drain on the on the on the costs that you might be uh, uh, incurring. So, reviewing the printer contracts, what arrangement you have, consolidating consolidating that volume, cutting down on those contracts that that uh, uh, would add uh, a, a lot of value. The last one is around uh, stopping all reimbursement for IT related uh, uh, telecom claims. Uh, now this is a this is a tough one again uh, where uh, a lot of the the companies have given mobile phones to users uh, and uh, if if they are using mobile phones for making business calls they make a claim back uh, to the companies. 
Now that arrangement is good, uh, but uh, there could be options where uh, uh, some of those costs the employees could actually budget back on their personal taxes. Obviously, this is this is uh, you'll have to take advice from your uh, accountants on that. But that's an option where uh, instead of re reimbursing those costs, they can uh, they can be charged against uh, uh, against uh, their tax returns. Or it could be as simple as uh, 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 giving them a, a flat uh, a flat disbursement based on their average usage usage for the last uh, uh, six or seven months, and that takes the whole cost of submitting the expenses, uh, somebody reviewing that, then it go, it's going into accounts and then it's getting paid. All of that comes out of the process. So again, stopping uh, reimbursement or, or looking at arrangements that are, that are a lot more convenient uh, given your, your uh, 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 risk and tax arrangements, that could be an option to explore. So some, some very, very basic tips in there. But uh, uh, based on our experience, every time we have had a look at you know, IT expenses line by line, had a look at uh, uh, what's going out of the door and asking some of these questions, they have always identified cost optimization opportunities. So with those 10 tips, uh, I would be very keen to uh, explore as to what your thoughts are. So I'll pause here use the, the questioning uh, question uh, ch chat window in, in, uh, in the webinar facility. And if there are any questions, we'll take it uh, at this stage. We don't have any questions, but uh, yeah, feel free to uh, uh, record them and um, we will pause uh, after the next topic. And if there are questions, we'll take them along the way. So on, on, on the next topic around uh, service level optimization. So when, when we talk about uh, service level, optimization, it's around right-sizing your IT and aligning it with what your usage patterns are. And the usage patterns, they change, but a lot of times the arrangements that we have are quite static. So this is basically uh, uh, a focus on the topic to see what is the right level of service for the different areas that we need to think of uh, and identify opportunities where either we are over servicing in some areas or under servicing in other areas. So we will focus on service level optimization in this topic. So the first one that uh, becomes uh, it comes, comes across as a, a fairly regular topic, but there's always room for us to look at it differently. Uh, it's around reviewing the maintenance contract. Now, it's, it's around asking the question, are you paying for more, work, more than what you need? So an example could be, uh, are you actually paying for a response time of two hours for a certain type of tickets where if you made the response uh, time to four hours, it's actually not going to have much of an impact. So asking those type of questions saying, what are the things that we can either eliminate completely? So there might be uh, services built into that contract that we are not using. So is it possible for us to actually take it out in there? The second one could be, what is the type of quantity that we have built into those contracts? Are we saying for, for every 100 tickets that we, we are going to have, uh, this is what we are going to pay. Um, and uh, for, uh, for the tiered pricing from 100 to 200, there could be something else that we will pay. But if you go back to how, how you would have done the usage, you, might, you would realize that probably you're never crossing the threshold of that 100 uh, tickets, and you're not getting the benefit of that tiered pricing. And that could be an option to go back and say, look, 
it, is it possible for us to actually look at a slightly different arrangement, slightly different tiered pricing, so that we can actually share in, in the gains, as well as if there are risks, we are ready to, to take those risks on board. So just looking at asking those questions, they, they help uh, a lot. The, the next one in that contract management could be, do, do we actually need to have the frequency that we, we, we have got committed in that contract? So instead of somebody coming and looking at the printers every, every month, uh, do we, do we need, need that monthly arrangement in place or do we actually push it out to a quarterly arrangement? Now, all of these will, will have a slightly different risk uh, profile attached to that, but the, 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 the point I wanted to get across is review each and every contract that you have in place and, and ask or question whether you are actually paying for what you need or are you paying more than what you need for. The next one is around uh, balancing cost versus risk. Uh, so as, as I said earlier, each one of them, uh, every time you look at the contract, if you try and change the frequency, you change the quantity, you change the, the pricing mechanism, they, they expose you to a certain, uh, uh, the, a different level of risk. But having, having that openness in terms of what are acceptable risks versus what are un unacceptable risks will help us uh, get the balance between cost and risk right. Asking the question of, uh, are we actually paying maintenance or support for business applications that one, that, that those which are never getting updated. So uh, you might have signed a contract uh, uh, two years back, which has got maintenance fees built into it, but you are still on the same version that you had two years back. Now, if the version is working and the company has not provided you with any updates, then it, it lends itself to the question why are we paying that maintenance uh, uh, or, or support cost? So having a conversation, trying to take that out will, will, uh, will help uh, manage the IT cost. The second one is around uh, the call for support. Now, if in the last six, 12 months, you've not made any calls to their, their support team, now that, that means that the application is quite stable, your users are quite comfortable with it, and the chances that it's going to it's going to have an impact if you don't have a call facility call or support facility, it could be quite quite low risk. So again, that that lends itself to a question: you know, are we why are we paying the maintenance if we are not using it? The, the third scenario could be that uh, when uh, when you sign for applications, you might have a long list of applications that you have signed up for, but you're using only three or four app key applications or key modules within within that uh, uh, within that contract. Now again, that could be an uh, uh, option for you to consider whether you need to pay only for those three or you need to pay everything which is sitting on the shelf because that could could lead to a completely different conversation. So doing a critical evaluation of what may, what applications you've got, what maintenance you're paying against that. Do we really need to have that maintenance contract in place? Uh, again, that's a that's a that's a powerful uh, uh, area or topic to to explore. And then the last one that uh, that's on the list is around uh, on-call services. Now, uh, again, a lot of the contracts will have on-call services per month, or they could have a TNM uh, time and material arrangement. Looking at, do you actually need that on-call service uh, or you, you, you are happy for, to go with a higher cost time and maintenance uh, type, for a, type of an arrangement could help you optimize the type of service contracts that you have, you have in place. So some, some, some of the tips that, that we are sharing here, uh, they are based on our experience, but uh, we have seen that a lot of these things, they go under the radar. If the, the top line budgets are, are lining up and the numbers are not going too, too far from what you had budgeted for, some of these things, they, they don't get looked at. But if you are thinking of putting a structured approach around cost management, initiating, through, uh, initiating that, that review process along these lines will, will start identifying opportunities that you can take forward and start delivering uh, a better better uh, co cost uh, uh, equation for the services that are getting delivered. The next area is around the infrastructure optimization. Now, uh, 
this is again an area that uh, there is a lot that's happening and uh, uh, there's always opportunities to start looking at how do we how do we manage our infrastructure investments uh, uh, more effectively so the first one is around virtual environments and and, and if uh, if there are people on the webinar who are not uh, not uh, familiar with that terminology it's it's the uh, the capability for uh, the IT teams to create environments on top of the of a single server so that uh, uh, with every every new system getting implemented or or a new application coming on prem uh, they can leverage some of the existing servers that they have rather than going and buying buying a new box every time you want to bring uh, a new application like hr uh, or supply chain application etc cetera, etc cetera. Now, virtualization has helped immensely in in pro, better uh, utilization of the server capacity. But the flip side of that is, with the flexibility that it comes with the virtual creating virtual environments, there are always redundant environments that are sitting on the server. So, again. With, if, if, with, with that hypothesis in mind, if you start looking at what are the non-production environments that are in there. Now, with every project, there are uh, UAT environments that get, uh, create, get created, there are pre-production environments that get created, there are test environments that get created uh, along the process. But once the project uh, is up and running, it goes live, things, people move on. And all of those those non-production environments that get created, they are they are they are they are sitting there. So looking at looking at what environments you have, which one of them are non-production environment could actually help uh, save on support, maintenance, and license cost. The second one is around uh, consolidating some of those virtual environments. So if you have created multiple environments, uh, maybe it's an it's the question could be asked as to why do we need so many environments can we actually uh, consolidate some of them so that uh, uh, so that we can uh, uh, we can keep leveraging the capacity that we have uh, and in some cases improve the or identify spare capacity that could be on on those servers and then the last one is around uh, uh, undersizing some of those virtual environments uh, which goes back to the, the the topic of right sizing based on what your load on the server is uh, at this stage the next one around it infrastructure is around uh, bring your own device uh, byod and uh, which again it's it's something that has been in 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 discussions for the last many years but Given that now a lot of the applications are moving to cloud, people are moving into working from home more and more. Thinking about extending that out to bringing your own device could actually save a lot of cost in supplying the devices to the users. And also uh, with BYOD, there are some end user management uh, security systems that you have to you have to consider, but with those end user security uh, applications uh, byod uh, might be a, might be a way to go if if you're looking at uh, at reducing the cost of supplying those devices and the last the last topic on that is on your network services which is uh, uh, and and this this applies mainly to setups or organizations that have got multiple sites they've got multiple dedicated links uh, between offices looking looking at what network arrangement that you have in place could actually help reduce the co the cost quite quite significantly so uh, redundant network links uh, this links uh, this is this is related to the topic that we were talking earlier where uh, reviewing what redundancy that you have built between your uh, network redundancy that you have between your uh, between your sites do we need to have that uh, redundancy uh, that could be a question to ask or it could be uh, uh, just looking at how how your traffic is flowing in your in your uh, network where instead of all the traffic going via a data center into the internet with cloud applications a lot of the traffic could be going through the internet straight into the, the service provider 
Now, if those are the type of changes that you're seeing in your, in your environment, uh, it could be a good time to actually look at the whole network structure that you have in place, look at what re redundancy, what duplication that you have in, in there, and uh, exploring option of reducing it. Now, a lot of these things are commoditized also. So if you are out of a contract, you can actually take it into the market, test it out if you can get a, a, a better uh, a better deal out there. And uh, that, that could be a, a low hanging fruit that you can you can uh, target quite quite quickly. The next one, backup strategy. Again, a lot of organizations they have uh, they are still on uh, uh, on on premise uh, applications. So backup strategies, uh, how often you're doing it, how how those backups are managed. It could be could be a, a uh, an area to look look into, especially if you have you have started moving some of those applications to the cloud, uh, then uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, changing the frequency of the backup could could be an option. Now, with every change in frequency, you get you get uh, better cost uh, savings coming out of that. So, having a look at your backup strategy, what schedules they are on, uh, and is there a potential for us to redesign that? Next one around infrastructure is uh, warranty and support on hardware, where it includes servers or, or uh, the phones that you might have, or even even the laptops or PCs uh, that that uh, are in your office. Now, extending warranty or pushing them out by by, by squeezing another year of of a useful life out of that uh, that that could be an option to consider. Now the other option related to that is uh, uh, if you, your 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 workforce has shifted to uh, working from home, and a lot of the desktops which are sitting in the office are not getting used, there could be an option for you to actually uh, uh, resell them or or uh, uh, repurpose them. So looking at some of those options on what you can do with the warranty, how you can repurpose some of the hardware that you have. Uh, could be uh, and uh, could be uh, uh, could deliver uh, uh, infrastructure optimization. And then the last one, which is around uh, uh, standard operating environment. Uh, now, this is the, for for those who, who might not be across SOE. It's uh, it's around all the software that get gets loaded on your laptop so that it becomes uh, compatible with the requirements in your organization. So. The moment you plug the, the the network in, you are able to access uh, your uh, uh, all the applications that you use in your company, or you can access all the uh, all the uh, shared environments or the shared drives that you might have in, in in your organization. Now that's basically a step where a device gets delivered to the company there are a few people who actually put the the standard operating environment on the laptops and then it's given to the users one of the options to consider is it's is it possible for us to outsource it there are a lot of uh, laptop uh, suppliers who actually can do the the soe installation on your behalf now considering uh, looking at something like that would add uh, would take a lot of manual effort out of getting PCs ready for 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 people joining uh, the organization, and that's good. That if it's outsourced, will get all of that effort directed into something which is a lot more value adding. So we have touched upon a number of different topics on, under infrastructure optimization, all the way from managing the PCs to servers to the network link, uh, etc. But going back to uh, some of the work that we have done with our clients. Uh, this is an area which it's it's really looked into. But when you start looking at IT cost, cost optimization, a big, big, big uh, area for us to look into and, and see if there are costs that we are incurring, which is which is not in line with the service or 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 what we want for our organization. So again, I'll I'll pause here. Uh, and invite if there are any questions. Uh, I'll pause for 30 seconds. So if there are questions, feel free to type them in, in the chat window and we'll take them 
uh, take them up now, or if required, we can push them out and take them up, take them up later on. All right, we'll, we'll get to our last topic that we wanted to discuss in today's uh, webinar, which is around vendor management. Now, th this is, this is a, 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 again, a very fascinating area, especially if when, uh, uh, when you start looking at what IT setup you have and which are the vendors that are enabling you to bring it all together because uh, in a lot of the IT uh, setups that we have gone into, there is a big reliance on one or more uh, vendor in there, whether they are uh, service providers or they are support contract or support uh, uh, providers, or it could be hardware providers, et cetera, et cetera. So vendors play a big role in enabling IT. So the first thing that we always ask is, have you got a register of all the vendors that you have, all the contracts that you have with that vendor, and what is the expiry date for those contracts that you have with those vendors? And you'd be surprised as to how much effort it takes for some of our clients to put it all together. Now, that's a first thing that we would recommend you to look at, which is have a vendor uh, map, have a contract register, and look at when the contracts are up for renewal, because that will give you the visibility of what are the opportunities that might come in, and at what time uh, in, in the next uh, six to 12 months. So that's the first thing that, that uh, uh, you should consider. Once you have uh, the, the contract register, the vendor map and the contract register, then it's around reviewing those contracts. Now, review of those contracts could be in terms of the arrangement that you have, the volumes that you have committed to, but also the level of service that you are getting. Because in a lot of cases, you will realize that you might have actually uh, uh, signed up for a service, which is, let's use an example where the turnaround time is uh, one day. But if you go through across all the all the areas that you have, uh, that, uh, that all the tickets that you have given, uh, that the vendor has managed, you will realize that probably in the last 12 months, the average turnaround time had been two days. Now, that, that's a sign where the service that the vendor is giving, it's, it's, it's good service, but it's, it's not in line with what's in the contract. Now, if that's the case, then it could be an option for you to go and, and, and basically say, look, I'm happy with the two, day, two days turnaround time for, for these type of tickets. What is going to be the new arrangement and what's the, the price uh, for, for or fees for that type of an arrangement? So looking at some of those things, again, we'll, we'll give you uh, looking at not only the arrangement, the fee arrangement that you have, but also the service that you're getting, bringing them to, bringing the two together, will start having a more holistic conversation in terms of what the contract should look like. Then the last one is around uh, uh, adding up the spend across uh, vendors for the same category. Now, again, telecommunication, I keep using that example, but that's, that's, a, that's an easy one where you, where you feel that you've probably got three or four vendors in in your in your uh, network uh, setup, and you are actually paying the vendors for different volumes and different uh, fee structure that you might have in there. Trying to combine all the volume uh, uh, under a single vendor and negotiating a better rate could could deliver immediate saving. So without impacting the uh, without without creating undue risk in the system, if you can actually consolidate volume, uh, have one, one, one or two vendors and consolidate and negotiate better, uh, that is an easy win to deliver some cost optimization. The next one uh, the, that when we talk about vendor management is around uh, taking some of those services back to the market. Now, in, especially in 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 in, um, 
commoditized services, uh, even if the contract is not up for renewal, it's always good to, uh, uh, they, they, they are, there are a lot of opportunities for uh, you to go, go into the market, test whether the rate that you're getting is, is reasonable or not. So again, irrespective of where you are on the contracting cycle, if there are commoditized services, uh, consider going back into the market, testing it out and see if you can actually get, get a better rate. And then the last one that we have touched upon a couple of times, which is around uh, paying time and material for some of those services rather than looking at, uh, so looking for time and material type of services and also negotiating uh, a service-based outcome. So in some cases, if you your usage patterns have changed where you're paying time and material and they are, they are actually escalating the cost, uh, then it could be an opportunity for, for you to go back and have a a service or an outcome-based agreement rather than looking at time and material. So a number of areas that uh, that uh, you could consider into uh, looking into the vendor management area. But uh, again, that's that's an area that does get looked looked into uh, quite quite often. But taking a structured approach, having visibility of what contract is coming in, what's built into those contracts, combining it with the service that you're getting from the uh, from the vendors would open up uh, a lot of options to see how we can optimize the cost. Now, I'll, I'll pause here for, for questions and I can see that there are a couple of questions that have come up on the chat. Uh, so I'll quickly go through them. So the first question that has come is, is around, are you seeing a lot of clients move into uh, the cloud for saving? So that, that is definitely an area that is gaining a lot more traction uh, where uh, clients are moving their on-prem applications to cloud. Uh, and with every, every move to the cloud, they've been able to uh, reduce their OPEX and, in, in, and make it a lot more volume uh, based. So again, from a trend point of view, that's a trend that is, is, is uh, uh, it's quite quite prevalent and it's happening across the whole landscape of clients that we deal with from small, medium to large enterprise clients. Now, I've got a couple of more pages to cover. So I'll, we'll, we'll try and cover them. And then there's one more question on the chat. Uh, so we'll take that time permitting, but I'll go on to the next slide in terms of uh, of what are the things to avoid. So if you, if you reflect back on the topics that we have covered, we, so we started with why IT cost optimization is important. Then we went into three different areas. The first one was around the top 10 tips that we have seen, which can deliver immediate benefit. Then we looked at service optimization and then the last, last the, we, service and infrastructure optimization then we looked at the vendor uh, levers. They were all focused around managing costs, managing risk, managing value get, they're getting out of it. But we also thought it's good for us to share in terms of what are the things we should be avoiding. So the first thing is uh, uh, we should avoid cutting the wrong cost. So understanding as to what's the business priority, whether there is a focus on OPEX, CAPEX, both, all of those things helps us get a better view of what the costs are and are those the right levers to go after. So avoid cutting the wrong cost. Linked to that is the second part, which is keep an eye on the risk and, the, and, the, uh, and what's critical. So cyber is one of those areas that, that is absolutely critical, irrespective of the size of organization, the, the amount of, amount of uh, uh, cyber attacks and the cybersecurity risks that we are seeing, in, in, it's, it's, it's there all the time and it's becoming more and more. So when you're looking at, at uh, cost optimization, keep an eye on the risks and avoid touching areas which, which will expose uh, the organization uh, uh, onto undue risk. 
Third one is around don't launch it in isolation. Cost optimization is it's an IT and a business joint effort. Co-design it with the business, uh, co-design it with your key stakeholders, engage, communicate with them. Because the more the business takes ownership towards what's happening in IT, the better outcome that IT can deliver for the business. So uh, don't launch IT optimized cost optimization as a, as a, as a, a isolated IT activity. Uh, put it put it as a as a joint uh, activity with the business. Understand costs that are that are target for reduction, um, and what's targeted for reduction is always stable, standard, and mature. Now. There could be areas which are very, very specialized, and, and I've seen it in a lot of manufacturing setups where what they do on the line is, and the software that is managing the manufacturing lines is very, very specialized. Now, we would never actually go and say that's an area that you need to start looking at how you can reduce cost on managing that particular application. Because that is something which is very, very critical it's very unique to what you are doing and probably that's not an area. So something to think about when you're looking at cost optimization opportunities, focus on things which are stable, standard and mature. The second last point is just don't focus on dollars alone. All along our, our, our message has been, it's around optimization. So it's around taking dollars out where it's not adding value and putting dollars in where it, it can add uh, more value for the dollar that you're spending. So don't just focus on dollars, balance it out with the, with the, with the service uh, and, and the investment that you need to do. And the last one, don't create, uh, take debt uh, for the sake of sa saving dollars or immediate dollars. And by that, what we mean is maybe there is something that you're doing now, which you need to continue doing, because if you don't do it, uh, that will have a bigger implication uh, six months, 12 months down the line. And if you're spending $10 to, to fix it now, maybe in six months time, 12 months time, when it's more become more critical and it's more broken, it might take you $100. So don't create that type of scenario where, where you're focusing on, on the immediate dollar uh, saving and creating risk for the long term. So there are a number of things to avoid, um, but when we look at the optimization, it's always a fine balance between where we can we can we need where we can focus on and what are the type of things that we need to invest. And and having a conscious uh, approach towards that always gets uh, gets the best outcome. So this is the last page that I wanted to cover, and uh, this is this is a case study of uh, of a company that we went through. Uh, uh, where we took took the the approach that we have uh, we had in this presentation, which was around starting with something which is as simple as doing a breakdown of all the IT costs and going line by line. Now, that was the first step that we did, which where we said, look, let's expose the budget, let's go line by line, get as much details underpinning each one of those line items, and break it down into what is project related, what is BAU related, what is uh, a labor, co labor related, uh, internet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, we got almost uh, 150 lines uh, under the headline budget number. Now, we, we had an option of either going line by line or we had an option of basically doing a bit of a dip test to, to see if there is any, any benefit that could be, could be derived before we go into the, the line by line approach. So what we did was we actually used our benchmarking toolkit to, to benchmark the IT costs. Now, the benchmarks are very different depending upon which industry you are in uh, and, and uh, your reliance on IT, uh, your costs could be very different. So for this particular company, when we got to the benchmarking part of it, looking at what the global standards are, uh, it got down to around seven, eight, percent of the revenue which go which we went into IT typically. Now for this organization it was it was up, uh, more than 20-25% that was going into IT. 
And the moment we did that that high top-down benchmarking, we knew that there is more more that we can we can identify and use the detail analysis to to test our hypothesis, get more comfortable if there is if there, there is value in there. That's where we went line by line into each of the cost items. I started asking questions exactly in, in, in terms of, of some of the questions that we have had in the presentation. And the net outcome was that there was $48 million worth of IT savings that got identified. Now those, that $48 million were spread over a period of time because a lot of those things were connected to the contracts that had in place, which were not expiring for the next uh, 12, 18 months. And hence they were, they were phased out. But if you look at the, all the benefits that all the, uh, the IT cost reductions that were identified, they were in, in, close to around, sorry, they were close to around $16 million out of the $48 million that they had in the overall cost. So a very targeted exercise, top down benchmarking with, with uh, a line by line review, helped them identify 24% IT cost reduction. And that led to a number of different options that were put in uh, on, the, on the roadmap, all the way from moving to the cloud to making sure that we have the right mix of FTE, so uh, in-house versus contractors, et cetera. What contracts we have in place, are there uh, things that we are doing now that we can outsource, or there are things that we were doing which were which being done in an outsourced manner that we could bring in, in. Demand and response, like what we talked about, where, where uh, can we actually have a two hour response time rather than have one hour response time, et cetera, and then looked at all the projects that they were doing. And by doing all of that, uh, we were able to identify $16 million uh, uh, out of that $48 million of the IT budget that they had, they had which was around 24% production in there. So there are benefits in there. There, are, there is value in going through that exercise, uh, but it's not only about costs. When we, when we looked at the benchmarking uh, activity, with, especially with this client, we realized that there, is, there, is a, there were a lot of places where we could invest to improve customer service. Uh, a lot of areas where em employee productivity uh, went up, especially when they were not doing the, the manual activity of managing spreadsheets, manipulating data, et cetera. But cost reduction is, is what we, we uh, touched upon risk and compliance, and the last one was on asset utilization. So I would highly encourage uh, the participants to look at what, what setup you have, what are the options that uh, you, can, you can explore, and, uh, uh, and our experience shows that there is value in there. Uh, I think if you could undertake that activity, I'm, I'm sure you will identify value too. So with that, uh, I, will, I will finish the presentation here. Um, my contact details are on the screen. Uh, and as we said, we will send you a, an email with the presentation, with some of, the, uh, some of the, the articles that we have written on this topic, and also a, a link to the recording of this session. So feel free to access that, that material. And if there are questions, I've got my email ID on the screen. Please send a question and we, we, will, we will take it from there. So with that, uh, uh, I will thank everyone who, who participated in, in this webinar. I hope you found, found it useful. Do share your feedback and, and comments with us so that we can take that, those comments on board and, and improve the next uh, two webinars that we have lined up in this series. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.